Hey, it's Phil from Euroheat, and a lot of the time people are really confused about screeds, what they are, why they're needed, and how they're made. So here we're with uh, a couple of different types of screeds that are construction form and Peter has knocked up and they're actually going to be sliced up and distributed to some people that we work with regularly so that they don't have to come to the site, that they have a bit of the site in their office at all times. But basically why screeds are used is because they separate what you're heating or cooling from the rest of the building. And why that's important is because you can get a lot of heat losses or energy transfer into different parts of the building if you don't have the thermal insulations. And so for example, here we have 25 millimeters of polystyrene, which is a pretty standard uh, insulation thickness for screeds in Australia. And what this does is it thermally decouples the heated screed from whatever it's sitting on top of. So for example, if we were, we were on the first floor of a new house, this would be the suspended slab, and then we would have the insulation on top, and then we would have the piping and either the concrete or sand cement screed or whatever we choose on top. And so it's really important to do this so that we're heating only what we want to heat, and we're not heating this much concrete underneath. Um, all the energy is going basically everywhere, not only up, but down, sideways, it's escaping left, right, and center. And this is one of the main causes in Australia of why you get uh, really inefficient and expensive hydronic floor heating and cooling systems. And so this is the standard type and this is what you would see not only generally done in Australia but around the world. But we've also got our own special screed which you can see is much, much thinner. And so while we can actually have such a thin screed is because we have very high quality insulation at the base which is very difficult to compress but has uh, great insulating properties. And then we have smaller diameter pipes uh, and so they're not as big as these ones. These are for example 16 millimeter and within this we have 10 millimeter pipes. And we also use a special mix of screed which allows us to have a very thin uh, layer. So we don't, it doesn't need to be as thick as for example this standard type. And so they're both fantastic solutions. This is generally what you'd see in a, a standard house. Um, and this is more suitable for, say, renovations or uh, old buildings where you can't place a lot of dead load or a lot of extra weight onto the floor or where you just generally want a, a nice thin screed. So this has a, a very fast reaction time. So if you start pumping heat or, or chill into it, you can feel the results quite quickly. This is a little bit longer, uh, but this is still much less than in a, if you were heating a suspended slab. So with the screeds, even though we have the standard type and our own custom type, we can actually adjust the level or the thickness of the insulation and the height of the screed to, to anything, to suit any project. So we can do custom screeds for the projects. So that means you're not locked into doing you know, either one solution provided by one manufacturer or something else provided by another one. So there's a lot of flexibility. So generally, the more insulation you have, the better thermal performance as there is less energy leaking from the floor system. Now, there's actually a few tricks to putting together a good screed. One of them is that you have to have a really well prepared subsurface or substructure. And why that is, is because imperfections in this or, or uh, you know, waves or any sort of unevenness can lead to gaps between the insulation and the substructure. And this is one of the causes of drumming when you hear something drum. Whereas a, a well-installed screed will never drum, ever. So another really important thing to consider with screeds is that you need expansion joints. And what ex expansion joints are, uh, they allow the screed to move a little bit. And you might think that's a little bit weird, but everything around us moves. Even your current building that you're in right now, it moves a little bit, it, only by say half a millimeter or a millimeter or a couple of millimeters. But it moves because as things heat up, they expand. And as things cool down, they contract. And different materials expand and contract at different rates. 
And so we know for exactly for these screeds how much they expand and contract. And what can happen is if you don't have these expansion joints which allow for this thermal expansion and contraction and the tiny, say, half a millimetre movement, what can happen is you can actually get cracks through your floor structure. And you might have seen this if you're an architect, you might have noticed this in some of your projects. And the reason for this is that there aren't any expansion joints and the screed has been poorly installed and poorly designed. So to summarise headed screeds, there's generally two types. One is the standard where you have the 25 millimetre thick, say, polystyrene with your piping on top of this and covered with roughly 50 millimetres plus or minus of either concrete or sand cement screed. Now the other type is this proprietary system where there is 10 millimetres of high compressive strength insulation and then 20 millimetres of a high strength screed. Uh, so this is an overall height of 30 and here we have an overall height of about 75. Now each type of screed has its uh, ups and downs, pros and cons. So we can't say, we can't tell you which screed is right for which kind of house or building or project. There's a lot of factors that have to be considered. But if you'd like to have a quick chat about what type of screed is most suitable for your project, give us a call at Euroheat. We'd love to help you out and have a quick discussion about you know, what the pros and cons are of each type and how best to integrate it into your building for a really efficient hydronic heating and cooling system.